All right. Well, hi, everybody. All right. So this is going to be our new user webinar. Um, so let's see the way. All this right. Well, hi, everybody. All right. So this is going to. I forget how that's going to work there. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I'm getting over my flu. Um, go teaching life. So the way this works, this is kind of an interactive webinar. Um, and I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see what this kind of looks like. Um, while we're doing the webinar, you can then kind of like respond, we can interact in the chat. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a class so that all of you can sign in as a student and kind of run through the lesson as I'm creating it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class. So I'm going to head over to insertlearning.com. And if you haven't signed up for insertlearning.com or insert learning before, but I'm guessing most of you have, um, you can always restart the sign up process by clicking on add to Chrome or just sign in. Um, so I already have the insert learning browser extension installed. It's in a browser extension for Firefox and for Chrome. Um, it doesn't work on mobile devices at this time. So I'm going to click on sign in and this is going to take me right to my dashboard. Another way to get to your dashboard is by opening a new tab and then clicking the extension. That's kind of my favorite one. <coughs> All right, and so now over here in the class in, in my dashboard, now I've got my lessons, I can do my grading, organize my classes, and then some other resources that we have here. So I'm gonna go over to classes, and I have, let's see, what was our um, new user webinar? So we're gonna go with this one, same one that we had from before, and this is kind of like how you'd have like your student sign up. So you can either import your class roster from Google Classroom, or have students enroll themselves. And we actually did that on purpose, one, so it's easy on the teachers, but then also um, kind of some security things. That way you're, you know, a clever student can't, you know, enroll everybody in your, cl in your class. So I'm gonna copy that code and then I'll paste it over here in our webinar chat. So I'm going to paste that in. Um, so now what you do as this, <coughs> so to sign up for that class, what you're gonna do is go to insertlearning.com. Um, you sign in, so once you get to your dashboard, you can switch to being a student by clicking on your profile icon here and then click on student. Now you can click on plus, enter in that class code, and now you're gonna be a student in my class. Um, I should mention that it's not, um, it's not possible to be a student in your own class. Even though you can go to the lessons, it still kind of treats you as a teacher in that, class, in that case. All right, so. Now that's how you can sign into my class as a student. So I'm gonna switch back to being a teacher. And we're gonna make our first lesson. <laughs> um, so if you haven't already checked out the public library, there's lots of lessons in there. Um, but today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one from Science News for Students <coughs> um, on the Olympics. So I'm going to go to sciencenewsforstudents.org. Um, I'm a high school science teacher. My background, um, I'm one of the teacher founders of Insert Learning. Um, and yeah, I'm working as a STEM coordinator at a charter school. Um, and so it's always good to, you know, do some science. All right, so this one looks pretty good. So I'm gonna open this one up. And looking through this, this is a lot of text. <clears throat> it's a lot of great text. It's gonna have a lot of great information, but right? Majority of my students won't read this. So we are going to change that. So I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm going to load in the insert learning browser extension. So you just click on the extension and then toolbar shows up on the left hand side. And this is what really makes insert learning different than most other tools that are out there is that it works on top of the content that's out there. Um, <coughs> so let's see here. And everybody can see my screen, right? Okay. All right. Good. Um, so now that I got this toolbar on the left-hand side, this is how you interact with the page. And I always like to start off by adding in some instructions at the beginning. So um, and I'll kind of go through these different tools. The assigned one, um, I'm gonna do it in a little bit here, but first I'm just gonna add in some instructions. So I'm gonna click on this sticky note tool and click right there on the title. And you can notice how anything that shows, highlights yellow means that you can You can set it up so it tries to identify what is that main content block. Um, but it still kind of gets like other things on the sides. So I'm just gonna go right there. And I'm just gonna type in instructions. <laughs> so read the text and highlight. Now, I could be typing this out, but what we've done is in our help center, 
click on this little life ring down here. We've got some quick lesson ideas and templates. So I'm going to click on that. We've got two templates. We've got text dependent questions and annotation instructions for students. I'm going to open up the annotation instructions. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this. So I've copied that. And now heading back over here, I'm just going to paste that in. And so now I've got my instructions for my students. And you can customize this however you want. But so for this, now I'm telling my students, highlight um, the main idea in green, supporting details in yellow, and then <coughs> two words per section that are new um, in, the, in each section in blue and then add a comment of what the definition is in your own words for that for that word. Um, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assign this lesson to our class that you guys are all joining. So going down to, where was it? New user webinar, so I'm assigning it. So for those of you that have now signed into the class, and again, if you missed the class code, it's up here. And hey, hello from North Carolina. We got a lot of people from North Carolina. This has been great. Um, so now, <coughs> as a student, the way that you, easiest way that you can find that lesson is you head over to your dashboard, and then in the lessons section, um, right, and again, like you have to be a student to see this, you'll now see this, and you'll see of your class of new user webinar, um, and then you just click on that link, and it's gonna take you directly to here. What's really cool is that everything that I start doing on here is going to update in real time on your side. Now, I am going to reload this. The first time when you create a lesson, you do have to reload the page until you start to get these like real-time updates for the teacher. So I'm just reloading. I'm going to load the extension again. <laughs> All right. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a question up here at the beginning. I'm going to add in one of my text pattern questions. I'm going to add a question right there. So I clicked this insert question. We've got questions and discussions. And from right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one of our text dependent questions that we've got, um, again, going back to um, our help center. And it was one of these text dependent ones. And it was predict based on what you've read and seen so far what the next paragraph is going to be about. So you can either copy that, paste it in, or I'm just going to type it here. So I'm going to click right there in the box. Predict what this article will be about. And you can change the number of points if you want to, and then click create. <coughs> And so now, if you're a student, you should you can now see this question right there, and you can start typing your answers right there. So this is a free response question. Um, now, so what that means is that students can then, as they, they'll type right there directly in the box, um, and it's going to auto save it. And then as a teacher, you can also click on view all responses, and then you can see then all of your students' names, and then if they've responded to it yet. And you can also assign scores directly from here. So it's a really neat way to be able to start seeing how students are acting, responding to the text and your questions on the lesson itself. Um, now I'm gonna follow this up with um, another, well, I'm gonna add a question down here a little bit further, right? So, um, well, actually, we'll add a discussion. Um, do you, or have you or any one you know ever had a concussion? I was kind of like add things where students can kind of like, you know, share their knowledge, their information. All right, so now I've got our discussion. Now, this discussion is private to just our class. Only students in our class can see that and respond to it. Um, so if you're watching the webinar, you can go ahead and start responding to these things, and they'll pop up on my screen in real time. I'll keep switching back here um, if anybody's got any questions. <clears throat> All right, so now as we're going along, um, we start getting through here. So I'm going to add in a question right here. So we've got two paragraphs. I'm going to add in a question. I'll, I'm going to go with one of our text dependent ones. So this one's going to, um, let's see here, summarize the above paragraph. So I'm just going to copy that, paste that right there, and create. So the real simple way of this is great because these are text dependent, meaning students can't Google them. I like to call them ungoogleable. The only way they can answer this question is by reading these two paragraphs, but you've lowered the barrier for your students because they also now are seeing this as they only need to read these two paragraphs, and then they can answer that question. <clears throat> so as we're going along, though, I am going to add in a couple of notes here for my students as they're reading as they're reading through here. <coughs> so let's say like derailed. So I highlighted that, and now I'm going to add in a little note here, right? So you can then change the color. I'm going to leave it as yellow, but I'm going to add in my note for my students. Um, thrown off from what it should be. Um, it's going to be my definition, and you can add emojis, and students can do all these things as well. On that little emoji there, and then click OK. 
And so now you can see those highlights on there. And I see now what I like about doing this live is that I can see when somebody started annotating something. So up here, this new little icon popped up and that's because one of my students have now interacted with the text in some way. So I'm gonna click on this and now I can click on the different students' names and I can see what they've started to highlight. And let's see here. I can't quite see where that is. I'm not really sure, but someplace in here, right? Um, but yes, right, so now I can see then on here, right, so now Casey has responded, yes. Um, so it's kind of fun <clears throat> because now you can start to see people's responses pop up in real time on here. Um, and same thing if I have a student then selected, so now that I've got Casey selected on here, any annotations that Casey makes on these <laughs> on the text is gonna now show up for me on the teacher side too. All right, so we're gonna go along. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is down here, I want to add in a video. So I'm gonna go to YouTube and we're going to um, athletes. So this one looks like, uh, it's kind of a long one here. All right, let's go with this one, this is a short video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the URL. So I'm going to copy the link to this YouTube video and I'm going to paste the link into my sticky note and I'm gonna follow this up with a question from the video, explain how a concussion. There we go. So students, as they're going along, they can actually now watch this YouTube video right there and then answer the questions <coughs> that, I've, that I've added in after that. Um, there's a lot of other tools that you can in, insert into insert learning lessons. Um, if you go back to our help center, um, we've got this tools to embed. These are all different tools that you can add in. Um, and there's a whole variety, like these are ones about code, Desmos is about math, um, different simulation tools, adding in your Google Docs and a whole variety of different things you can add directly into it, even like quizzes and quizlets and stuff like that. Um, so there are all different things that you can, media that you can embed in there. All right, so we've added in some annotations. Um, some notes, <clears throat> one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a note right here. I'm gonna, cause one of the, well, this is one of the nice tricks that I've seen some teachers come up with. I'm gonna write pop, like stop here. We will a class discussion. Answer the question below until everyone has caught up. Right, so you can say like question or video, or maybe you've got some other activity. Maybe now move on to some station where they're going to then simulate a concussion um, with some sensors and kind of learn about that. Um, <coughs> so then we could follow that with a question. But it's a really neat way to be able to break up the text without like copying and pasting and spending all this time moving into a Google Doc. Um, all right, so we've added in all those things. I'm going to create the question. But what I'm going to do for this one though is I'm going to turn this one into a Google or into a multiple choice question because our questions can be free response or multiple choice. Um, so for this one, I'm going to make something up here. So I'm going to create my question as usual, but now as the teacher, if I type in here, I can now turn this into a multiple choice question. So I'm going to put like sports, um, car accidents falling and <laughs> brushing your teeth. I've been watching a lot of The Office lately. All right, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what the, what the main source is. Um, right, so now I've selected the correct answer. <laughs> so now as a student, the way this works for students is that they kind of go along and it kind of randomizes the order and they keep going until they get the correct response. Um, and so I'm gonna see back here, nope, no questions yet on there. Um, and let's see here. So I'm gonna go up and see if anybody else has responded to any of these questions yet. No, not yet, okay. Um, so I'm gonna switch to another one and I'm gonna show you guys kind of what this looks like on the, let's see here. All right, so I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go be a lesson or a student in my class. Kind of show you guys what that's like. All right, so I'm gonna to go to my classes, because right now I think I'm a teacher this one. So I'm gonna select be a student, okay? And in my, in my demo, my uh, class, no. Okay, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get that class code, and go back to my classes, 
and my insert learning for teams. I'm going to copy that and back over here, add, and I'm going to enroll in my class, All right? So now I've enrolled as a student. So heading back over here, <coughs> I can now see lessons that have been assigned to mine. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna reload maybe. Where did my class go? Did I, did I switch to a student account too quickly? All right, so I'm already in that class. All right, so I got my demo class. I am. Um, well, I just don't know what I'm doing wrong here. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's always the way it goes, right? All right, so I'm just going to copy and paste the link in. Um, and head over to my lesson and let that load in. All right. Um, I don't know why my lesson didn't show up here. I think I did something that was switching between a student and teacher too quickly. All right, I'll come back to that here. Uh, all right, right. so I got my multiple choice questions. Um, <clears throat> so when you're all done, right, so then typically this is when you would then go through and now you would assign that out to your class, right? So this is my new user webinar class. Um, if you're using Google Classroom, you can also then assign it directly out there. Um, if you haven't created a class, you can also then create a class. To view the students' responses, you can view them here on the page itself. OK, so then Jen's already answered this one, so it's cool. Thank you, Jen. Um, <clears throat> so you can then, what I, what I really like about this, right, because as a science teacher, it's, you know, a student's misconception about science sometimes can give me as a teacher a lot more information, be really valuable to me, than if they just simply got the right answer. So that's why we have it, so that it actually then tracks what order did, stu did students guess incorrectly, and it auto grades it. So if you did all multiple choice questions, <laughs> the whole lesson is going to then self grade. Um, and then as a teacher, when you go back, you can then see what are students kind of like guessing incorrectly first as they're going along. I'm gonna see if Jen highlighted anything on here. Oh yes, so then here now is where I can see Jen highlighted this sentence I mean, you can see that Jen's highlights show up a little bit fainter than <coughs> my teacher ones. That kind of works the other ways, the vice versa too. So students can see the teacher ones as they're annotating their own. Um, all right, so at this point now, we're ready to do, <coughs> we've assigned it out to our, our students. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're going to view the responses. So I'm gonna head to the dashboard. So one way I can do this is by clicking on more options and then go to dashboard. Another way is by opening up a new tab and clicking on the insert learning extension. And so you can view all the responses on the lesson itself, but if you go to the grade section, you can then also view them here too. So I'm gonna select my class, and then I'm going to select the lesson that I wanna look at. And now it's gonna show me a summary of all of my students with all of the questions. Now I should know that discussion questions don't pop up here, so the discussions won't show up in here, but just your regular free response, multiple choice questions will. And there's some really neat things that we've set up here. <coughs> One, by default, it kind of goes by question. So it shows the question and then the students. Um, if you've got a lot of students, you can then select just simply one, and it's going to show you just for that one. But if you want to also, you can select individual students, and now you can see what that one student has then said for each of them. And it also gives you a little log of when it is that they've activated that question. So whenever it is that they responded to it, so I can see here that Jen never really started typing on this one. She did click on the box, but she never typed anything at 618. And then at 614, she answered that one and auto-graded it. And then it also gives a, a score for the student. And then if I've got no one selected, it also gives me a class average, which is pretty low right now, right? Because it's I haven't really gone through and graded things. Um, <laughs> you can download those grades as a CSV file. Um, and then also, if you imported, if you imported the class from Google Classroom, you'll see a button up here that lets you now send those grades to Google Classroom. It'll just send the average um, score there. So assuming it's out of 100 points on Google Classroom, I'll automatically send that out there. 
So head back over here to this lesson because there's a couple of other things that you can do here. Um, one is if you click on edit lesson info, you can now change the name of the lesson. This is what will show up in your insert learning dashboard for the students as well um, <coughs> and in the public library. And then you can also select a subject area and then you can select then grade levels and then add in any kind of tags here like Olympics. And then this is the thing that's been really exciting is now you can share these out to the public library. So if I click on this, now click on save, my lesson is now gonna show up in the public library so other people can see that and then copy it. Before we leave this, so I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So you can share this lesson also with other teachers. Um, so you can just copy that link and share it with people's teachers directly. Um, don't give this link to students though. This just simply lets you view it and then copy it, but you can't answer any of the questions on there. Um, and then another thing that too is insert learning. It's we have a free trial where it lets you store up to five lessons at one time. <coughs> um, but we are completely self-funded. Um, so everything is just simply through our through the subscriptions of only forty dollars per year. Um, and really, you should be saving that much money in your own personal time and in paper from photocopiers. So that's kind of why we. Um, can I take this route because freemium is is tough to do um, and we're just simply running insert learning um, on our own without any kind of outside funding or anything like that it's been really exciting so any subscription is a great support for us um, keeps insert learning development going so I'm gonna head back over here to our dashboard and clicking on lessons um, this is where now you can see this lesson right there <coughs> from the dashboard you can do the same thing you can assign and then all those other things you can do here but if we head over to the public library, you can now see that lesson has shown up right here. It shows you who shared it. Click on that, it takes you to their Google Plus profile. Um, and then clicking on it lets you then preview the lesson, but no student responses or anything kind of go through. Um, now I am gonna go back here and I'm going to unshare my lesson from the public library. And go to let edit info, I'm going to uncheck that. And now if we go back to the public library, no, it doesn't show up. Um, <clears throat> all right. Right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <coughs> um, so you type something in, but it didn't save on Firefox. Yeah, so it should be saving on Firefox. Um, I guess one thing would be um, on the box, you get a little tiny like saving icon thing, a little, little wheel. Um, <coughs> it'll kind of spin on there. Um, Try reloading the page, maybe? I mean, that shouldn't make a difference. Um, let me know if that wheel keeps spinning for you, because um, that means it's not saving. That means there's some sort of network connection issue um, if it never finishes saving and doesn't say saved on there. But we are 20 minutes in. Um, this is basically the end of our, of our webinar. Next week, we're gonna be talking about, I'm gonna stop <coughs> sharing that so you guys can see my face now. Um, so next week, we're going to be talking about um, using insert learning for professional development because that's kind of one of the new things we've been hearing from a lot of you that you love having insert learning for your students, but it also really makes the professional development articles that you're sharing with each other within your PLCs much more interesting. And I've experienced that with my own teachers that I work with. Um, and so we're working on some really neat stuff. So we're going to be talking about that at our next webinar on Tuesday next week, same time. Um, this is going to be saved on YouTube, so you guys can always go back and check that out, as well as enroll in this class and try it out. Um, email us if you have any questions, and thank you very much for joining me, everybody. Um, you can check one more time if anybody had any questions. I don't see anything right now. Um, so thank you. Have a great evening, and um, I'm excited to see what you guys create in the public library. So have a good evening.